Welcome to vlog three. Um, I am doing my coaching philosophy opposed to the coaching process due to COVID-19 restrictions. Aims of this vlog are to outline current philosophies identified and styles used, particularly in SNC. Outline my personal coaching philosophy and how to implement this and explain how I've adapted my approach through my experiences. So first of all, it's important to understand that coaching philosophy is how a coach acts and delivers his success within his sessions. The main philosophies that I've been able to identify were the humanistic approach and the behaviorist approach. Humanistic approach, the athlete uh, is athlete-centered and not af outcome-driven. Rogers 1983 states that it is human nature to want to learn, and as a coach, it's our responsibility to facilitate that learning by providing the right environment. Whereas the behaviorist approach, athlete learners will be learn to repeat the correct action if positive feedback is given, and that is mentioned by Skinner, 1974. So the athlete or learner will learn not to repeat if negative feedback is given. This can be done through verbal or non-verbal feedback. Okay, so if we look at my approach, and to be honest, it's a mixture of the humanistic and the behaviorist approach because I'd like to develop the athlete as a whole, um, both physically and psychologically. And I like to provide positive feedback when they perform something well, and I like them to self-discover when they are performing something not so well. If I expand on what I mean in terms of how going into education has helped me as a coach I've been able to look into a great amount of detail at approaches such as Gange 85 and the different levels of learning and also the Kolb cycle um, and with the Kolb cycle I've been able to understand the importance of review analysis and then implementing the changes Whereas the Gange has enabled me to understand that athletes are at different stages and will learn at different points. The tools that I've learned in education um, have allowed me to kind of adapt and mould my coaching session to a more learning friendly approach using, for example, the VAC approach, despite there being limited evidence to support it, um, as mentioned by Kratzig and Arab not 2006. The reason why I still use it is because I believe it, it benefits my session, allowing athletes to understand movements from different viewpoints. The reason why I offer and use the Kolb theory is because it offers up an opportunity for them to observe and reflect their performance and allow them to kind of self-discover how to develop rather than being specifically led by a coach. The way that I look to implement my philosophy through my session is right the way through from the start to the end. I will look to provide positive reinforcement um, and instructions to them using visual, verbal and getting them physically doing it. I will also look and aim to guide them and facilitate them in the discussions in correction and development so that they can discover how to achieve something correctly without me physically telling them because I believe there's no more nothing more powerful than an athlete discovering how to perform an activity correctly themselves. The feedback that I will typically use will range from internal to external feedback depending on the athlete's ability and level and their actual situation. With more advanced athletes, I typically use more external feedback because they further along in their learning process. So moving on to my coaching values that I implement and apply as a coach and I feel that are integral for me to achieve successful outcomes within my session. And they are empathy, integrity, approachable, engaging, motivation and most of all being positive um, i'm going to highlight a couple um here that i feel that are the m most valuable um, the first one is empathy being able to understand an athlete and understand what external factors that could come in and affect them in their session is vital to be able to then implement strategies to prevent that from impacting their performance 
The second one is being positive. If we're positive and we can engage and make training and sessions fun, it allows athletes to want to come on that journey with you and stay on the journey.